want to make your first remix but don't know where to start follow this simple three-step process to build banging bootlegs which will definitely 10x your dj sets hi i'm dj hurley from mkfm award-winning dj producer and presenter with over 35 years experience in this dance music industry and i recently posted a video on tiktok just to show three tips to get you started creating your first remix and i said in that video if you want to see a full video of me making a remix following these three tips then let me know in the comments well you asked for it so let's do it so the first tip is to get an acapella of the song that you want to remix there are multiple ways to go about doing this so the first option is you could just do a google search you can actually buy an acapella album so if you head over to somewhere like beatport Take a look at the genre drop down and choose DJ tools. You'll find loads of acapella albums there. Or you can create a DIY acapella. So that's using either artificial intelligence. There are some websites that you can use or you can use software on your computer. So I'm just going to quickly demonstrate here using Apple Logic Pro 11. So it used to be Apple Logic Pro X, uh, X standing for 10, but they've just upgraded to 11 and you can actually separate stems. So stem separation is available now in Logic Pro 11 on a Mac, so this is super useful. The only catch is though, it's quite expensive software. So the second tip that I gave was to identify the key and tempo or BPM, beats per minute, of the actual acapella. Now again, this can be done in multiple different ways. Sometimes it will be included with the actual file name, so if you've downloaded a genuine acapella, it should in theory include the BPM and the key for you, so you will already know it. You can, of course, just Google it. So do a Google search, and quite often that will give you the result you're looking for. Or you can use software again. So if you've already got DJ software, that's it. You don't need to go out and spend money on additional software. Just drag the acapella into Tractor, Serato, Recordbox, Virtual DJ, any of those, and it will automatically analyze the file for you anyway. That should give you the key and, again, the tempo or BPM. I like using mixed in key. So I'm just going to throw it into mixed in key here just to see what it comes up with. Then the third tip was to get yourself a sample pack. One of the bonus hacks that I mentioned was get sample packs in your own genre that you're going to be making. That one's obvious, but the hack to make your remixes and bootlegs just stand out that little bit more from everyone else is also get some sample packs from outside of your genre. So for example, if you're going to be producing house, what you could do is find an R&B sample pack or a drum and bass sample pack and use some of the sounds from those and incorporate those into your remixes. That way your remixes will stand out from everyone else's because you're going to be using sounds that no one else has ever thought of using in the remixes. So the killer hack here is to now go through the sample packs and identify all of the samples which are in the same key and ideally BPM that the acapella is in as well. Finally, what you need to do, and I never mentioned this in the uh, in the short video, is you obviously need to pull it all together in a DAW, so DAW, Digital Audio Workstation. And I guess that's probably why you're here watching this video, just kind of how do we pull it all together? You gave us the three tips. Now let's see you working the magic. Okay, well, let's do it. First thing, you set the BPM of the project in the DAW to the same BPM as the acapella. Now, quick side note. Lots of DJs, producers, and remixers still don't know this musical fact. If you set the BPM of the project in the DAW to something different that doesn't match the acapella, when you put the acapella in and you speed it up or slow it down, the key will change. So for example, you might want to take a slow acapella and speed it up and turn it into a house remix, which I totally get. And that's what you find happens with a lot of pop tunes. Kind of like what I play in my Friday night show. The remixes I play aren't remixes of dance songs. Dance songs for me will just stand as they are. I can play those as is. But anything that's kind of like a slow, you know, like Dua Lipa, somebody like that. So if, the slow, if it's a slow pop track, I quite often want it to be more of a, a house tempo, sort of club remix, just to give it that kind of weekend feel. So it's a slower song sped up. Well, in that case, what's going to happen then is the key of the acapella will change. So my tip there would be bring the acapella then into the DAW. So just drop it on an audio track. 
match the tempo to the tempo desired. So let's say one, two, four, one, two, five for a house remix. Export that straight away. Then drop that back into your DJ software to now analyze it again to find out what the new key is because it'll have a new key. Then you want to find all the samples in your sample pack, but match that new key because don't use the old ones because the key will be wrong, right? <laughs> and you want everything to harmonically mix together. So sound nice, not sound clashy. And that's why you need to know the key. But adjusting the tempo or BPM will adjust the key. So be careful, please be careful with that. So here I'm matching the tempo or the BPM in the project to the acapella. So I don't need to worry about changing it here. What I'll now do is drag the actual acapella onto an audio track. So we'll get that in. And it doesn't really matter what order you do things in from this point forwards. Some people like to work with the vocal track at the top. Some people like to work with the vocal track at the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in the drum loops. We're going to bring in all the samples that match the key, whether the vocal is at the top or bottom. That's your own personal choice. So let me drag in a drum loop. It's good if you've got variants or variations of a drum loop. So in your sample pack, you might have a loop labeled full. You might have a loop labeled top. You might have a loop that just says hats. You might have a loop that just says kick, kick and hats, kick and clap, clap, snare, kick and snare. If you've got those variants and variations, bring them all in because they are going to be super useful. But don't worry, don't worry. If you just got one single loop that's kind of full on and will work as the, as the groove for the tune, you're good, you're golden. What I'll do now is I'll drag in the baseline sample. Again, all of these are going to go onto audio tracks at this stage because they literally are audio samples. I'm not working with MIDI in this video. Remember, this is all about creating your first remix, kind of like your first steps into creating your first remix. I'll drag in some of the other samples that I've identified then. Again, they've got the same key. Again, they've got the same BPM. Then, well, it comes down to arrangement. You have to lay out the samples in a manner that sounds like a full track that you would literally play out in your DJ sets or that you'd want to play in your DJ sets. Or like some of the tracks and tunes that you already know and love by your favorite producers and artists. Ideally, in your arrangement, if you're keeping it simple, Drop in a few mutes. This is where you'll cut parts. So we can cut part of the drum pattern. You can cut part of the bass line, although it's good to keep the bass line rolling. So maybe cut out some drum or cut out some hi-hats. Utilize some of those other drum variants that you've got. So where you, where it's not a full loop, maybe it's a top loop. Top loop basically means it just doesn't have the, the punch of the kick on it. Okay, so it's just kind of the, the, the top, the jingle, 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 jangle <laughs> of the drum loop. The technical term, jingle, jingle, jangle. Now, a little bit of bonus content for you. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you. Thank you for sticking around and hanging around. But I do have an extra tip I'd like to share with you if you've got time. So in the introduction to this video, I said making your own remixes could 10x your DJ set. And if you thought that's a bit of a stretch, what's he, what does he mean by that? How can he make that claim? Like that, that's a bit of a claim, right? What I meant by making your own remixes, by the way, we should really call them bootlegs. You can't officially call your remix a remix, or it's a, you know it's not an official remix because in theory you haven't got the rights, or the publishing rights, or the copyright to use that particular a cappella or song unless you have gone to the record company and literally asked for it and said I want to do a remix and they've written back and given you the the okay the all clear, uh, then please, ideally do not call what you are doing remixing call it bootlegging it's a it's a bootleg okay a bootleg remix if you like but it's a bootleg anyway with the bootleg that you are creating you will be playing versions of the songs that no other dj is playing or even has access to now with that said a dj and producer you may have heard of called hardwell also i think afrojack as well might have done exactly the same thing but definitely hardwell he got to his current level of fame by just flooding the internet with bootlegs. Like he literally started, everything was labeled as Hardwell bootleg. Hardwell, so he was known for his bootlegs. Hardwell became known for bootlegging. But because they were so popular, his name, people knew his name. DJs got to know his name. Producers got to know his name. Promoters got to know his name. And so with that, his production has blown up. And of course, he's now on the world stage as a DJ. He started with bootleg production, which is obviously what we're focusing on in this video. And he's not the only one. Many other DJs have started the same way. So if you can start making your own bootleg remixes, 
then do it. My advice would be, if you are playing out at parties, clubs, venues, whatever, keep your bootlegs to yourself for about six months to, an, uh, to a year. And what I mean by keep them to yourself, play them. <laughs> I said play, play them so everybody gets to hear you playing these, these versions. And it will generate interest. It will generate uh, anticipation around the, around the tune. People will be like, what's that remix you're playing? What is that remix you're playing? Right? You can either tell people it's yours or don't tell them. Um, it's okay to tell them, but obviously they're going to be at you. They're going to be like, oh, give me a copy, give me a copy, send me a copy of that. It's like, uh, just tell them, just say, I'm holding it back. I'm keeping it exclusive for my sets for a bit. I will release it later in the year. Then get it online. Best option, go for SoundCloud. <laughs> go for say All us DJs are going to be looking on SoundCloud, especially for any kind of unique bootlegs stuff like that you can kind of get away with it there as well from a copyright point of view but you know i haven't told you that because <laughs> um, again you haven't really got the rights to use it but yeah 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 do it because as long as you give it away for free then uh, i tell you the djs will be on it and they will then start playing it now the other way of doing it is if you're not djing in public but you are really feeling the vibe of wanting to become a producer your bootleg remixes Get them out immediately. So as soon as you've made it, get it up onto SoundCloud and get it out there because all the other DJs will be playing it and pushing it for you. So rather than you keeping it back as an exclusive for your DJ sets, which is always cool because again, you're playing versions other DJs haven't got. They'll be jealous. They'll want it. They'll want to know, hey, where, where's he getting these remixes from? <laughs> I'm making them. They're mine. <laughs> okay. But if not, yeah, if you're, if you're not able to play your bootlegs to other people and, and get people to hear them, then get them out immediately. And again, off the back of that, just like the hardware scenario, people are gonna hear them. People are gonna see your name. Something I would definitely recommend when you do upload to SoundCloud or possibly just before you upload to SoundCloud, kind of at the same time, think about artwork, please, please do this. Please think about artwork as well. Um, so records, 12 inches, CDs, whatever, uh, would always have a, a cover, okay? The front cover. Now, usually, if it's an artist that you're remixing, so if I use the Dua Lipa scenario that I mentioned Dua Lipa earlier, um, so if you've got like a Dua Lipa remix that you're doing, okay, find the original cover. Find Literally, find the original artwork. Just do a Google search. Google, do an image search in Google. You'll find the cover art. The most popular artwork for a bootleg is literally the original cover, and then somewhere on the cover, you just put some text overlay on top, that literally says, you know, your DJ name, bootleg. Okay, so like in my case, I'm currently known as DJ Hurley from MKFM. So yeah, DJ Hurley bootleg. I used to be known as Rough Cut when I produced. Uh, I still am. <laughs> Deep in my heart, I'm definitely Rough Cut. That's who I feel I am still. Um, so yeah, you know, I'd put like Rough Cut bootleg. You wouldn't normally put contact details and stuff on the artwork. I mean, if you want to, you can do. Some people do put their email address on. Um, I kind of say don't. Don't do that. They'll find you on SoundCloud anyway. They'll find the, the remix. Get, make sure your contact's sort of in your bio and stuff like that. They will message you if they want a copy of it. I have definitely reached out to loads of remixes uh, through SoundCloud. Dropped them a message and said, loving your your remix of, could you, would you mind, you know, sending me um, a, a high quality version, high resolution version, sort of 320 kbps mp3 or WAV file if you've got it. Um, and I'll give it a push on my show. I'll make sure I mention you and your artist's name when I play the remix on the show. And that way, I'm going to be reaching 84,000 homes across Milton Keynes, for example. So your one remix from one DJ picking it up could possibly be reaching tens of thousands of people. Literally just like that. Just That's it. That's all it takes. That is literally all it takes for you to blow up. Done. I hope you found some of this useful. Thank you for hanging out with me, listening to me droning on about my passion for music and remixing and bootlegging and production. Let me know in the comments what kind of genre you're hoping to remix. Uh, what you know? What is your genre? What 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 is what is it you're you're producing? You're producing house. You're producing club. You're DMB. Is that your thing? You're going to do drum and bass remixes of popular tunes? That's always a win-win. Get them onto SoundCloud. They're brilliant. So for example. Do a leaper again, right? Do a drum and bass mix. Get it up there. Uh, Ed Sheeran, get it up there. You know, club mix. <laughs> Do it. Use the techniques I've just mentioned. And you will be golden. <laughs>
Now I'm actually going to be pulling together a few more videos for my YouTube channel, looking specifically at creating or how I create. I'm not saying these are the, you know, the only way to do things, but my method, my techniques, what I use. Some of the DJ edits videos that I'm planning on making are going to be creating clean edits. So obviously I play on the radio show. Um, so yeah, I need, I need clean edits. So a lot of pop stars, believe it or not, swear. Ariana Grande is bad for it, man. She swears so much. The amount of clean edits I have to do on any one of her new releases is incredible. Honestly, the amount of work you got to put in is simple to do, but I'm a perfectionist, so I need it to sound right. It's going out again, like I said, to like 84,000 homes across Milton Keynes. I, I need it to, you know, be on point. So I'll show you how to create or how I create clean DJ edits. Um, I will show you how I create um, extended mixes, extended edits. They like make it a little bit easier for, um, you know, mixing. So some extended DJ beat intros and outros. I will also do a video where I'm doing a, a transition edit. So that's where maybe you've got like an R&B track and you want to get from an R&B set into a house set. Well, I'll show you how to create an edit of one song, which starts slow and goes fast. Or we'll go the other way around we can go fast and go slow or we'll go from house into drum and bass or we can go from drum and bass backwards and go into house or r and i'll be making those type of videos as well so if that sounds like your thing please definitely subscribe to the channel if you haven't already if you got some value out of this one basically can you do all the youtube stuff for me because it'll really help me get this video out to people and it'll just build the channel a little bit um really appreciate it give it a like give it a comment and uh, a subscribe would, would be awesome. Thank you very much for hanging out with me. You never know. You could be the next David Getter or Hardwell. Good luck. Ciao.